Welcome back to CIS 105. Today we're going to complete Excel Chapter 3, Working with Large Worksheets, Charting, and What If Analysis. This begins on EX 113. On EX 114, you'll see Figure 3 1, which is an overview of what our completed worksheet will look like. As well as on EX 115, you'll see Figure 3 1 continued, which is our clustered column chart. Let's begin by flipping over to EX117, which has us run Excel and create a blank workbook. As usual, the basic housekeeping for Excel applies, as well as all Microsoft products. We're going to make sure that our worksheet is full screen. We're going to make sure that we are in normal layout mode, and that cell A1, the default cell, is selected. In cell A1, we're going to type the text, Caitlin. Ice Cream Shop. Okay, we're going to click on cell A2. Since we're only going down one cell, we can easily press the Enter key or the down arrow. Okay, this one's going to be six dash month, and we're going to spell it M O N T H space financial projection. Okay, we're going to press the Enter key. We're then going to apply the Savan theme to the workbook. So that's going to be done on Page Layout. We'll find themes, and then we should find the theme that we're looking for. S-A-V-O-N, Savan. Okay, all that did right now is change our font right now. Okay, let's flip on over to EX118. We'll click on cell B3. We'll click on the Home tab. In cell B3, we're going to type the text January. We'll press the Enter button versus the Enter key. Once again, this just deselects our you know enter, entering text mode here, but does not make us leave the existing cell. We're going to find our alignment and click on the a More Alignment Options group. We'll see that on our Alignment tab we'll find an orientation. We're going to adjust our orientation to 60%. So we should be able to drag all the way up to we get to 60 degrees. All right, 60 degrees. We could have typed 60 down there as well. We'll click the OK button, and now we'll see that January has now a 60 degree angle. Let's go ahead and let's fill our series, and we're going to fill our series all the way to June because we're only doing a six month projection. So our January is selected, cell B3. We're going to use our fill handle, the black plus sign. And we'll see that March, April, May, and June are selected. We let go. It's going to apply the same formatting that we applied before. Okay. Let's look at our autofill options right now. In our autofill options, we could see that we have everything that we're looking for. We want to say fill series. and we can click autofill options again and that hides that. We're going to click on cell H3. In H3 we're going to type the word total and then we're going to press the right arrow key. Because Excel saw that we were formatting things with a 60 degree angle it will make the total a 60 degree angle as well. Let's click on cell I3 
in cell I3 we're going to type the word chart and then we'll press the right arrow key again tab will work as well and we'll see that we have a the chart has also has a 90 or excuse me 60 degree angle okay so now what we're going to see is we're going to see some autofill options as well as some example for how to do a series you'll see some examples in here on table 3-2 and 3-3 what we're going to do now is we're going to increase our column widths so let's move our mouse pointer to the boundary box between A and B and we're going to drag that until we see it's 38 or 309 pixels so this will be kind of large 38, 309 pixels. We're going to select column B right now. We're going to select B and drag all the way to G, which is the months of the year. We're going to find our fill handle between B and C will work, and we're going to change that to 14.5. or 121 pixels and we'll let go there. So that resizes all of our columns to the exact same width. We're going to go ahead and click on H and we're going to resize H to 18. Okay or 149 pixels. Okay, so now that we have that resized, we're going to flip on over to EX122. Okay, so we're going to type some text. We're going to go to column A, and we're going to go all the way down to A4. In A4, we're going to type some text. The first one's going to be revenue. revenue okay then we're going to click on cell A5 in cell A5 we're going to type cost of goods sold cost of goods sold we're going to go and hit enter in cell A6, it's going to be gross margin. We're going to need to hit enter twice here. Go all the way down to A8, where we're going to type expenses. We'll hit enter. This will be bonus. Enter commission. Enter site rental marketing equipment repair and maintenance pardon me I somehow triggered the find and replace equipment repair and maintenance In cell 14, we're going to type total expenses. We're going to skip 15, so we'll hit enter twice. And then it's going to be operating income. Operating income. OK. So now that's taken care of there. Now, we do have a direction that tells us to 
select cell A5, which is the cost of goods sold, and we're going to increase our indent in the alignment group. So we'll see we have decrease indent and increase indent. So push that and indent it a little bit. And then we want to select the range A9 through A13. That's bonus commission site rental marketing equipment repair and, and maintenance. And we're going to increase indent there as well. Okay. We'll select cell A15 just to deselect everything. A18 rather. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to copy some text. So we're going to select. A18, we're going to type what dash if, make sure you capitalize the I and if, assumptions. What if assumptions? And I'll press the enter button up here. Okay. We're then going to go ahead and select A9. This is the expense, under expenses bonus all the way to A13. So this is what's indented here. And we're going to hit on the toolbar here, copy. You can also hit control C if you like, copy. And then we're going to select A19 and we're going to press paste. And we're going to see that our items have copied and pasted down. Now you're going to notice that the dancing or they call a marching and selection here is still moving so if you press the escape key that'll go ahead and push that away you won't have that anymore okay let's flip on over to EX125 where we're going to learn about inserting and deleting cells in a worksheet alright so let's right click on the row heading 20 so we're gonna right click here and we're gonna find an option for insert if I choose insert right now I'm gonna insert a blank row and that's gonna appear right before row 20 so this is gonna be sales revenue for bonus sales revenue for bonus Okay, so that completes that one. We're going to right click on 19 now. We're going to choose insert again. We're going to find a format painter option here. This one's going to be format same as above or format same as below. We want to choose format same as below because we want to have the indent happen. So we'll say format same as below. Now when we type margin, it formats it with that indent. If we did not choose same as below, it would have just left it as a first level indent. We would have had to hit the in increase indent button. Let's hit the enter checkbox and let's save our worksheet file. Save as. We're going to save this to our flash drive or wherever we're saving it. Mine is being saved to my CIS 105 folder to my classwork and I'm saving this with a file name of Caitlin. Let's click down here. Caitlin's ice cream shop financial projection and we'll click save okay we're gonna flip over to EX 129 where we're gonna begin entering some of our financial information so we're gonna select cell B 19 which is the margin right here margin and we're gonna type the information that appears in figure 3-17 on EX 129 so this is gonna be 
percent. Then for the bonus, it's going to be three thousand five hundred point zero zero, and I'm intentionally including the decimal places right now, even though you really don't need to. It's going to trim them off for the most part. Then we're going to in cell B20. We've typed that. We're going to go ahead and type in cell B21 65,000. Point zero zero. We're then going to type for the commission. It's going to be 25.00%. Then I'm going to type 10%. And I want to call your attention to as you're typing this because we're including percent signs and we're including decimal places here it knows that this is a number this is a number this is a percent because we're typing the percent sign in if we didn't type the percent sign it would just say number here okay so after we've done 10 percent this one's going to be five percent five point zero zero percent and then it's going to be 3.50 percent for equipment repair and maintenance after we've done that I'm going to hit the checkbox to complete that we'll see that that goes over to a percentage as well instead of a general now make sure you're on the home tab for revenue we're going to click on cell B4 for revenue and we're going to enter the revenues, which is 55, comma, 000, point zero zero in cell C4. I'm going to go ahead and type 67 comma zero 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 point zero zero sixty seven thousand April is going to be ninety point two five zero point zero zero May is going to be seventy seven comma five zero 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 point zero zero rather and then June is going to be seventy four thousand seven hundred fifty point zero zero and then we'll get to total now don't forget you never want to type a total you want to always calculate our total so we're going to click the auto sum button it's going to want to total everything up but we're going to have to expand our formula so we're going to sum all bring it right over now I do notice that I have a mistake in two of my formulas you can see it pretty easily 62,000 I have a 62 point and then um, 90,000 I have is 90 point so we're gonna check that it's probably gonna yell at me and we're gonna fix that to make it a comma and the same thing with April we're gonna fix that to make it a comma we'll see that our numbers are gonna update automatically it's so one of the reasons why we want to make sure that we use a formula all the time for Excel so that way we can adjust things and correct things as we make changes okay so that completes EX 129 we're gonna flip on over to EX 130 where we're gonna select cell H1 and that's the one that's currently selected that's the total we're going to insert a function here
me h1 I'm in the wrong spot here h1 here h1 we're going to insert a function in cell h1 we're going to go to date and time instead of most recently as function we're going to say date and time in date and time we're going to select the now option so now and we'll press the OK button and we'll see that it's going to ask for some arguments if we just click OK it's gonna to put today's date and the exact time okay so let's make sure we adjust our formatting for this because I, I believe I clicked too soon so our formatting for this is actually gonna be formatted as a date and our date is going to be 3 we'll have to scroll down here 3 slash 14 slash 2012 format it like that and we're gonna press OK now that's gonna format our date out appropriately alright so after we've done that I don't need you to complete the direction here where it tells me in H2 to put your place of birth um, that's something you could skip but what we do need to do is we need to uh, double click the border between H and I to best fit this column that shrinks it down really nice and small now let's save our workbook and flip on over to EX132 in EX132 we're going to learn about absolute versus relative references so we're gonna see a couple of figures on EX133 figure 2-23 has an A and a B as well as a C so it gives you an example of what relative references are like okay so let's flip on over to EX135 where we're gonna select cell B5 to select it this is the cost of goods sold we're gonna type an equal sign we're going to select cell B4, B4, so that's the revenue. This is going to then be multiplied, so it's going to be asterisk key, by open parenthesis 1 minus, you're going to need to type an absolute reference, so if we just type B19, and then we press the F4 key it's going to convert that to an absolute reference which has a dollar sign in front of both the B and a dollar sign in front of the 19 now you could type those dollar signs in there if you want and then we'll close our parenthesis out if we press the enter button we're going to see that it's going to calculate our cost of goods sold the next thing we're going to do is click on cell B6 which is the gross margin in cell B6 we're going to type an equal sign to start our formula we're going to click on cell B4 I'm going to say subtract cell B5 and then I should be able to hit the checkbox to get my total and we'll see that we've got a completed formula for that one alright the next thing we're going to do is we're going to flip on over to EX137 we're going to learn how to use an if statement here so let's select cell B9 this is the bonus here we're going to insert a function I'm gonna look for the function type that's called logical we're gonna look for an if statement here and we're gonna click OK 
Now we're going to have to program a logic test. And a logic test is going to go like this. If B4, so we can click on B4, B4 is greater than or equal to B21, B21, we should be able to hit F4 for a relative reference there, or an absolute reference rather. So B21, or we could type the dollar sign in front of the B and the dollar sign in front of 21. Then the value of true is equal to B20. So if I click B20, which is the bonus, and then hit F4, I get my dollar sign B, dollar sign 20. If false, the value is going to be equal to 0. If I click the OK button, we'll see that 0 is selected because I didn't meet the bonus criteria. Let's go to 139, where we're going to enter the remaining formulas for January. So that's the commission. So commission is equal to B4 times the absolute B22. So if I click on B22, that's my commission. And I press F4, that turns that to an absolute reference. I can hit the down arrow. Pardon me, B22. Okay, I'm going to hit the checkbox first and then use the down arrow. Alright, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type equals B4 times B23. Absolute reference. Typing an F4 here. Hit the checkbox again, or the enter key would have worked fine for that one. The next one that's going to be in marketing. Marketing is going to be equal to B4 times B24 absolute reference. I'll hit the checkbox here. And then the last one is going to be the sum. So this is going to be entered. We have equipment and maintenance to do yet. Sorry. Equal to B4 times equipment repair maintenance F4 for that one. Hit the checkbox. And then I have a total expense. And my total expense is going to be equal to the sum. You click the auto sum button. And this is going to be B9, B13. I can hit the checkbox there. All right. So that takes care of that. The last thing I have to worry about is my operating income, so I'm going to click on cell B16 for operating income, and that one's going to be equal to B6, B6, minus B14, and I'll have to check box on that one. Now, to show you all the formulas on one sheet, we're going to hit Control plus the accent key, which is going to turn on all of our formulas. And what we're going to do is we're going to check them against. And I see right away I made a mistake because B22 should be an absolute reference, so I can update that one. If we look at the book, our if statement should be equals parentheses B4 greater than or equal to parentheses, or excuse me, absolute reference, so dollar sign B, dollar sign 21, comma, dollar sign B, dollar sign 20, comma, zero, close parenthesis. Then this is going to be B4, asterisk, dollar sign B, dollar sign 22. 
and then it follows the same pattern down 23, 24, 25. Then we're going to find our sum. Then we're going to find the B6 minus B14. So all of that is selected, all of that is correct. So we made sure that that matches exactly what we see in figure 3-31. So I can hit control X and key to turn off my formulas. I'll hit the checkbox here first, and I'll hit control X and key. That turns off my formulas. And again, just to show you, formulas on, formulas off. All right, so we're on 139, we're flipping to 140. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all of our references here. So this is going to be everything from here all the way down to operating income. And then we'll just drag that all the way over to June. And the reason why we went ahead and did absolute references for it here is because if we didn't do that and we copied over, it would assume that the reference for here included C22 and then D22 and E22. All right? Just like these are here. They're moving over. They're moving over. But this isn't going to change. This is going to stay in one position, so that's why we're keeping it there. All right. So now that we've done that, we've copied everything over. We're going to select the range H5, H6, H5, H6, which is my cost of goods sold and gross margin. We're going to hold down the control key and we're going to select H9 through H14 and then still holding down the control key we're going to select H16. After we've done that we're going to click the sum button and that's going to calculate all our sums out accordingly. So if we've done everything right our operating income should match 136,000 517.50 and the rest of them should all match. Since this one matches, odds are everything else is going to match as well because this is you know basically a subtraction of this. So we know that's going to match. Let's save our workbook and we're going to flip over to EX142 where we're going to add a spark line. So we're going to make sure that we can see all our columns and we're going to click on cell I4 which is the chart for revenue revenue I4 we're going to display the insert pardon me guys we're going to display the insert tab on the insert tab we're going to find the spark line category which is right here and we're going to choose the line spark line button that's this one here and we're going to input a a range here so our range is going to be in i uh, the dollar sign i dollar sign 4 and we're going to select our range and our range is going to be b4 g4 let's find b4 g4 so that's my range for my spark line. B4, G4. Once I've done that, I can click the OK button. And I should have a spark line that's going to appear for me. And it's going to look just like figure 3 38. OK. The spark lines are predefined styles here. So let's choose the More Spark Line button. And we're going to find the style that we're looking for which is sparkline style accent for darker 25 percent so that's probably somewhere around here sparkline style accent for darker 25 percent so that's going to change our sparkline a little bit we're going to take our fill handle now and we're going to fill our sparkline all the way down and we're going to drag it right down but notice something interesting about the sparkline here it automatically does not fill in the ranges that do not have any information and that's because there's no data for it to go ahead and chart against 
All right. So now that we've done that, we're on EX145, where we're going to make sure we have the range I4, I16 selected. That's all this. We're going to look at our sparkline tools on the design tab here. We're going to choose the convert to column sparkline button. All right. So there should be a column here. Convert to column sparkline. We're going to click that and now it's converted to us to a column sparkline instead of a regular sparkline. We're going to hit the save button to make sure that workbook saved with the same file name. Let's begin by formatting our worksheet. So we're going to flip over to EX146 where we're going to select the range B4 H4. So B4, H4. We're going to hold down the control key. We're going to select B6, H6. We're going to keep the control key held down and select B9, H9. B14, H14. B16, H16. And then we can let go of the control key. We're going to go to the number format right here. We're going to click the currency style here. And we're going to take our currency style and we're going to make our negative numbers appear in parentheses with two decimal places if it's not already selected. And then I can choose the OK button. So that formats all that out for us. Then let's select the range B5, H5, B5, H5. I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to select B10, H13. So that's commission, B10, H13. We're going to let go of the control key and I'm going to format my number. This time we're going to format this as currency. And then we are also going to format this with black text, two decimal places. But our symbol, instead of having a dollar sign, is going to say none. You can see how my sample has updated. We'll flip on over to EX148 where we'll click the OK button and we'll see that our document should look similar to the graphic and one of the things that I notice is my dollar sign somehow is missing from revenue so I believe I'm gonna have to fix that so I'm gonna you know quickly correct my error here so I'm gonna select my ranges together again somehow my dollar sign became missing from all this so let's fix that quick I go back to here, I go back to currency, it should have currency, two decimal places, click OK, now it's fixed. I must have had number selected instead of currency somehow. Alright, so that's selected, it's got the proper amount of decimal places, it has the dollar sign in front of it. We're on EX148, we're going to format our worksheet, so let's press Control Home. Control Home on the keyboard will bring us up to selecting cell A1. We're going to bold the contents of A1. Let's bold that. We're going to increase the font to, of A1 to 28 point. I'm going to select cell A2 and I'm going to increase the font of that to 16 point. I'm going to select the range A1, I2, A1, I2, just like this here, A1, I2.
and I'm going to change my background to have a fill and my fill is going to be green accent 4 green accent 4 then A1, A2 is still selected I'm going to change my font fill to be white background 1 let's select anything to deselect that range alright let's apply some cell styles so we're going to select cell A3, I3, selecting that range, A3, I3. We're going to apply the Heading 2 style to it. So we'll click over here to the Heading Styles, Heading 2. I'm then going to select A6, H6, A6, H6. Notice I'm not selecting the chart, A6, H6. I'm going to hold down the control key. I'm going to select A14, I14, or H14 rather, A A14, H14, and then I'm going to select A16, H16, A16, H16. I'm going to apply the total cell style, total. the next thing I'll do is I'll select cell A4 A4 which is the revenue I'll apply a fill color it's gonna be the last fill color I use so I could just click the fill button here and then I'll change my fill style to have a font which is the last font I use of a white background one as well Okay, so now that we've got that selected and all that completed, it looks like we're going to need to do a couple other things to this here. So it looks like we should have a bold applied. So I'm going to select all of this text and just bold it because it looks like there's a bold applied in our menu in our uh, our graphic already. So we'll click the bold button that gets everything bolded so it matches figure 3-47 alright the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select cell A4 which is the revenue A4 I'm going to click my format painter format painter and I'm going to copy my format painter so we'll go ahead and do a double click one two something like this we should get the thing here to select we bring our mouse pointer down and we should see that we can apply our format and we should be able to click on cell A6 as the source here gross margin A6 which is going to copy that over for us we're then going to go ahead and we're going to drag the range A16 H16 so A16 H16 so that's the operating expenses here A16 H16 drag that right across again leaving the spark line non-selected our format painter is still selected and then we're going to format our income here which is going to have a what if an assumption table here so let's go ahead and format that one thing we do need to do is we do need to reapply the currency style to B16, H16. So if we hit the escape key, we could turn off our format painter. See, that's deselected. We're going to have to select B16 all the way over to H16. And I'm going to need to go ahead and reapply the currency style. So if I click here and click on currency, it'll reapply the currency style for us. All right. Let's format the what if assumptions table. So let's select cell 
A18. We're going to change the font to 8 point. So right now our font is too big, so let's change this to 8 point. That's the what if assumption. We're going to italicize this text. And then we're going to underline the text. We're going to select the range A19, B25, A19, B25. We're going to change that font to 8 point as well. 8 point. We're going to select the range A18, B25, A18, B25. Let's apply a fill, and it's the most recently used fill, so we can use the fill color there. And then we're going to apply a font, which is also the most recently used font. So we'll click the white font as well. Let's deselect the range, and we'll click Save again. All right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a cluster column chart. So we're going to flip over to EX152. On EX152, it's going to ask us to select the range A3, G3, A3. G3. A3, G3. We're going to hold down the control key and we're going to select the range A9, G13. G13. We could let go and we can let go of the control and then we can choose insert. We're going to go to the recommended charts here so we'll find recommended charts. My recommended charts going to come up and we're going to find the cluster column chart. This is the first one that's selected for us. Cluster column. We'll choose the OK button. Excel is going to draw a chart for us. We're going to click on the move chart option here. We're going to move this to a new sheet. And this new sheet is going to be called expense chart. expense chart. All right. Now that we've done that, we can click OK. It's going to create a new sheet for us with our expense chart nice and full screen on there. We're going to flip on over to EX154. On EX154, we're going to click in the placeholder called chart title. And then we're going to change the chart title to say sixth dash month. six dash month projected expenses after we've done that we're going to underline this text so we can go to the home tab we'll have to select our text we can go to the home tab and click on underline or control U should work and then we'll click any place outside of that title to deselect it the chart elements is going to come up here so we're going to click the add button the plus sign for the chart elements here and then we're going to select on the chart elements we're going to find our outside labels here so we're going to find the option for data labels and then we'll hit the arrow over and we'll find outside end and we'll see that our data labels are going to start to show up there we'll click the chart elements button again to make that deselect we're going to use the chart filter which is looks like a funnel chart filter here and then our chart filter here 
we're going to go into the Sears category and we're going to unselect commission and then after we've unselected commission we're going to go to the bonuses as well and deselect bonuses and then we should be able to click apply what this is going to do is this going to remove those two items so there's a lot less data to chart if we click apply we'll see that our chart changes to only having four three columns rather instead of having five I can click the chart filter button to close that out as well and that closes my chart filter all right let's add an axis title so let's click the plus sign for the chart elements let's go to access we'll hit the over arrow and then we're going to unselect the primary horizontal Okay. Okay, pardon me, it should be I did this access, it should be access titles we want to select. So I'll put that back. Access titles, we're gonna select that. And then this is where we'll go ahead and unselect primary horizontal. Alright, so now that's select because we just want primary vertical to be selected. All right. So then, after we've done that, we're going to click the chart title, the placeholder that's here for access title. We should be able to click and drag to select all of our text. And sometimes it's a little difficult to go ahead and get it all. All right. This is going to be formatted with just a dollar sign and then we'll right click it and we'll say format access title alright so then the format access title shortcut comes up here the, little, the toolbar comes up we're going to click on the size and properties button we're going to choose the text direction and then our text direction is going to be horizontal so that changes the dollar sign to be the opposite direction we can click the close to close that alright let's change our chart style right now because right now we have the standard formatted chart style so we'll click on the chart tools design tab on the chart tools design tab we're going to flip first to EX158 where we're going to try chart style 3 so if you hover over then we'll see we're in chart style 1 2 and this makes it chart style 3 so we're going to click in style 3 we're going to right click any of the values on the vertical axis so let's right click these values here vertical values we're going to choose format access the format access tool is going to come up again we should be in the access options by default we're going to change the option here for number so we're going to open up the number and we're going to scroll down and we're going to see that we want our decimal places to be zero and then we should be able to click the close and that's going to take away decimal places here so it's just whole numbers let's go ahead and remove our filter right now so let's click on the chart elements area here to display our gallery let's go to data labels and then our data labels is going to be remove that check that turns off for data labels 
so that gets rid of all the labels on top here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to close the chart elements by clicking the plus sign. I'm going to click on my chart filters here and then we're going to reselect bonus and commission. I'll click the apply button and we'll see that our bonus and commission appear again. All right. So that completes the direction that's on EX159 with the exception of closing the chart filters. So we'll click chart filter to close that. We're going to flip over to EX160 where we're going to change the color of the expense chart so we can right click expense chart and say tab color. This tab color is going to be green accent 4 green accent 4. So we see that's the one there. We're then going to rename this chart sheet 1 here. We're going to either double click it or right click. I'll double click. This is going to be 6 dash month financial projection 6 dash month financial projection. We'll press the enter key. Don't forget you need to do that to confirm that change. The text goes back to green. We're going to change the sheet color or tab color. This one's going to be blue accent 2. 6 color first row. Blue accent 2. Okay now we've done that. Now let's reorder our sheets. We can do that rather easily by just clicking on the six month and dragging in front of expense. You see the little arrow shows up. You know that that reorders them. Let's spell check our worksheet here. So we're with the six month financial projection selected. We're going to click control home that gets A1 selected. We're going to hold down the control key and we're going to select the expense chart tab. Now both of them are selected. If you look at it you can see both tabs are selected. Alright, we're going to go to the review tab. We're going to do a spell check on it. We're going to see that I misspelled the word equipment so I'm going to change that one. I'll change it all and that's my only one I need to fix so I'll press OK. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work with what if analysis, we're going to preview our worksheet, we're going to split it up into panes and make it a lot easier. But first let's practice printing. So both worksheets are still selected. If not you'd hold down the control key while you select the inactive sheet. We'd click file on the ribbon we'd go to print. I tell it I want to print landscape. I'd want to change the scaling of this to fit to one sheet. I'd verify my printer and I click the printer button and I don't want to do that. So I'm not going to actually print it but if I did all I have to do is press print right now. All right. Next thing I want to do is I want to right click on the six month financial projection and choose ungroup sheets. Now we'll see that I can select both sheets independently. Let's save our worksheet right now, our workbook. Press the save button. All right. I'm going to make sure that cell A1 is selected. I'll click on cell A1. I'm going to zoom till I get to about 75%. So I'm at 100% right now. So I'm going to zoom till I get to about 75. 75%. That changes my worksheet here to 75%. Then I could use the zoom option to zoom until we get to 70%. So 
something like that so you can see what that looks like and then I can go all the way back to 100% and if I click the little line between it should automatically go to 100% let's go ahead and split our workbook our worksheet into panes so let's select cell E8 so E8 expenses okay let's click on the view tab we're gonna choose the split button and that's gonna split our worksheet up into multiple panes you can see what happens when I scroll I'm scrolling just that I'm scrolling just that if I use my scroll bar here I can see I scroll into multiple panes it's kind of helpful when you're working with lots of data and you want to see all the columns and all the headers at the same time. To remove our panes, we'll go ahead and unselect the split button, which will remove our split panes. Let's select so that we can see, scroll the worksheet until row 3, column A is the first one on the list so we'll go ahead and scroll row 3 column A is the first on the screen we're going to select cell B4 that's down here select cell B4 and then I'm gonna click the freeze panes button freeze panes and it's gonna ask me to freeze panes again now what's gonna happen is if I scroll down my months a year are going to be accurate they're going to stay on top of my data and then if I scroll kinda of hard to show you scrolling but you'll see that scrolling here the column is going to stay the same showing all my row height row titles here and then obviously I could scroll up and down a little bit so that's an example of freeze pane to unfreeze we're going to go ahead and we're going to select control home to make sure that my first button is selected here cell B4 is selected we're going to click the freeze panes button again and we're going to choose the option for unfreeze panes we'll save our worksheet again all right now let's do a what if analysis so let's scroll so that row 4 is the first column in our worksheet work sheet right now row 4. Let's select cell A7. We'll click the split button here. So that splits it. We're gonna scroll until row 9 is the first row. So for the bonus, that's gonna be the first one there. We are going to enter 5,000 in cell B20. So click on cell B20. So if I updated this to be 5,000, 5, comma, zero 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 and then in B22 I'm gonna change this to 22.50 percent and then I'm gonna change the B25 to 4% and we can type the percent sign even though it's already there percent this caused the six months projection for cell H16 to increase from 136,517.50 we're gonna see that it causes it to increase to $139,057.50. So we can see how it automatically changes things. 
We're going to go ahead and save our workbook again. We're going to scroll so we can see the what if assumptions are displayed here. We're going to select cell H16. H16, which is my six months operating income total here. We're going to display the data tab. On the display data tab, we're going to click what if analysis. On the what if analysis, we're going to select goal seek. In the goal seek, we're going to make sure that set cell H16. We're going to make this say 145,000 000 by changing the range and we could type B23 or we can select B23 B23 and we'll see that the absolute reference is selected B23 and then I'll press the OK button and what that's going to do is that's automatically going to recalculate everything to tell us my goal seek target value my current value I'll click OK and we'll see that I got to 145,000 by changing all of this information here so this is what I have to hit in order to get those goals alright I'm gonna hit the undo button that's gonna bring my totals back um, if your dialog box is still there you can click the cancel button and that'll bring everything back to its default that it was before. Alright. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit the split button on the view tab. So go to view. We'll say split to unsplit everything so that it's back to our normal ice cream shop here. We're going to select cell A6. A6 for the gross margin. We're going to display the review tab and then we're going to click on smart lookup which we'll see under our insights it's going to give us what a gross margin actually is we'll click the close button on that we'll look at our accessibility features here it just shows you that there is an option for accessibility features so there's an accessibility check um, item here and then that should complete our project. The next step is to upload our project to Excel Module 3. We're going to choose Upload. We're going to choose Choose. We're going to find our file that exists in our Documents Classwork folder. It's going to be the Caitlin's Ice Cream Shop Financial Protection. We'll click once it finishes loading. I'll choose insert. I'll choose add file. I'll click the giant blue button to turn in. And then it's ready to be graded. And that completes Excel Chapter 3.